Welcome to this episode of Above the Clouds. Uh, today we will be sharing with you the principles of spiritual enlightenment. Yonta pravishya mama vacha mimang prasuptam sanjivayat yakila shakti dara svadhamna. This verse is spoken by Dhruva Maharaj after his enlightenment. My dear Lord, you are all powerful. After entering within me, you have enlivened all my sleeping senses, my hands, legs, ears, touch sensation, life force, and especially my power of speech. Let me offer my respectful obeisances unto you. So here, Dhruva Maharaj summarizes the spiritual enlightenment he received by the Lord, the source of all spiritual light. He says, Obeisances unto you who are all powerful, Akila Shakti Dara and who have enlivened all my sleeping senses, hands, legs, ears, skin, life force, and especially the power of speech. How? By your internal energy, Svadhamna. The Lord enlivens the senses of his devotees with his internal energy. Svadhamna. That same energy as external potency in Omaya Shakti engages others in material activities of sense enjoyment and their senses become material senses. Thus things are manifested differently to different people. You have to know, in other words, what you are asking for from the Lord to be enlivened by his spiritual uh, energy will change your entire life for the better. Srila Prabhupada comments, when one is actually enlivened by the spiritual energy, all his senses become purified and he engages only in the service of the Lord. At that time his hands, legs, ears, tongue, mind, genitals, everything, engage in the service of the Lord. Such an enlightened devotee no longer has any material activities, nor has he any interest in being materially engaged. And Srila Prabhupada summarizes this process of purifying the senses and engaging them in the service of the Lord is known as Bhakti Yoga. Sometimes the world will look at such an enlivened devotee with scornful eyes. There is a very, very nice poem. It's called, it's called God's Idiots. It is uh, uh, composed by one very ancient Vaishnava called Namalva. He says, Mumbling and prattling the many names, while onlookers say they are crazy, entering or not entering cities, Standing still or swaying before a laughing word, they dance, they leap, undone by feeling. And the gods bow down before them. Yes, someone who is enlivened by divine or spiritual energy engages in different uh, activities than the world uh, and uh, therefore the world will sometimes laugh at them. 
Frederick Nietzsche, a big German philosopher, said, and those who were seen dancing were thought to be insane by those who could not hear the music. Or spoken in the logic of this verse, those who were not enlivened by Svadhamma, the spiritual energy of the Lord. Uh, how can one mm, engage uh, in the process of enlivened bhakti? Well, in the beginning, the senses are to be engaged by the directions of the spiritual master and shastra. And later, uh, after realization, uh, one engages spontaneously. Uh, in the devotional service. Of course, one still uh, holds the instructions of Guru and Shastra is very, very important. Um, but one does his, the same activity with an inner fire that was not there before. It's important when some, if someone wants to take this uh, road that he uh, surrenders um, in the, to the spiritual master and the shastras. Mm, there's a beautiful verse which is composed by Kashishwara Pandit uh, about how a disciple feels uh, when he is initiated in the process of uh, Krishna consciousness. He, he says on the day of his initiation to a spiritual master, My dear most spiritual master, with no support in this world, I was falling into the ocean of great sorrow and lamentation. Now you are my only shelter. You kindly took my hand and placed me in the boat to Vrindavan, where one finds divine love for Radha and Krishna. My guru, my shelter, my only savior, from this day forth I am yours. Make my hands your instruments and engage all my senses in your service. Please, take away my false pride. Destroy my material desires. Um, control my uncontrolled senses. Smash my bad fortunes and deliver me to the son of Maharaj Nanda. Today I offer my respects to you again and again and yet again. There's a very moving account of a great female devotee who uh, followed the orders of her uh, spiritual master, uh, Shabari, a tribal lady. Uh, when her marriage date was uh, fixed, she observed um, that 1,000 goats and sheep uh, were prepared um, under her father's order for slaughter to invoke auspiciousness. And she thought, I can't be part of uh, this and my, my marriage certainly will not take place. And she ran and took shelter under the lotus feet of her spiritual master, um, uh, uh, Matanga. Matanga, seeing her uh, a great, great mm, uh, sincerity, accepted her, um, although so many yogis and other gurus had rejected her due to her low caste birth. So Shabari served him with great attention and care and pleased Matanga blessed 
him that one her yeah, blessed her that one day certainly Lord Rama along with his brother Lakshman would come to meet her. Then Matanga passed away. Uh, Shabari, however, prepared for this blessed day where she would meet Lord Ram. Every day she swept the path and every day she collected mm, fruits. Then one day Ram and Lakshman came, ignoring the dwellings of hundreds of other yogis. Uh, they moved right into the ashram where she was with, with matted hair but constantly crying tears, um, chanting the holy names of Lord Rama. She remained in this world being so much enlivened by the blessings of her guru. Mm. When she saw Lord Ram, she said, there were so many exalted yogis waiting for your darshan, but you came to this most unworthy devotee. This clearly shows that you will neither see whether a devotee lives in a palace or a humble hut, whether he is a scholar or ignorant. You only see the bhakti. Uh, then after this, um, she gave Lord Rama a tour through the ashram. And everything in the ashram was so much still uh, kept li uh, as the time um, when, uh, when her guru was there. Lord Rama saw... Uh, for instance, the bark which the ascetics, uh, disciples of Matanga Rishi had worn, they were still attacked. Uh, he saw the sacrificial fire which was burning since this long, long time where Shabari waited for him. Then finally, Lord Ram, being so satisfied with this enlivened devotee, Mm, it said, you have satisfied me by the simplicity of your love and devotion. I know your heart's desire. You want to join your spiritual master again in the spiritual world. Now, uh, may you now go. And uh, by Lord Ram's grace, Shabari understood her life was now perfect. And she sat down in meditation in the sacred fire. Suddenly she was consumed by the fire and she went back home, back to Godhead. And this is a yogini, <laughs> so enlivened, so inspired, so empowered. My dear devotees, I request you to think about the mindset which we have heard. Um, uh, the mindset in which we can receive um, blessings. Um, uh, one can understand, yes, I was falling before into the ocean of great sorrow and lamentation, but now, by my spiritual master's grace, I have attained the beautiful forest of Brindavan. Mm, uh, uh, I have obtained the holy names the divine mantra, the shelter of the mm, great devotees uh, from whom I learn through their scriptures. Mm, uh, and more than anything, I have now a desire and my inner compass that brings me through storms and cloudy days as well, uh, through, uh, through sunshine lit days, that inner compass which brings me uh, and orients me towards Vrindavan Dham. Thank you very much for listening. All the best and see you for the next Above the Clouds.